Welcome to this very special edition of a live Quantum Healing with Candace show. We are streaming live to the Quantum Healing and Beyond Facebook page. And today is the 10th of November, 2017. And we are going to be talking about what it's like to live multidimensionally with my really good friend, Mary Truitt. But before we get started, I want to say thank you so very much to our sponsor, that's in5d.com and Greg Prescott. Thank you so much, Greg, for all you do for the world and for this show. I want to thank you so much um, for all of us, all the quantum healers out there who benefit from all of the work that you do for us and the world. So thank you so very much. So today I'm welcoming a really good friend of mine, <coughs> Mary Truitt, who lives in Annapolis, Maryland. She's been a quantum healer for a number of years, and we've been friends, I think, ever since we laid eyes upon each other. Maybe even before. And so today, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, because that's what we're going to yeah. be talking about today, right? So I want to welcome Mary Truitt, and I want to welcome all of you all out there who have um, graciously uh, joined us here either on the Facebook Live page or in the Zoom webinar. I'm trying to watch two computers today. I'm going to see if I can do it. Um, but yeah, yes, um, I'm hoping that it's streaming. So if, yeah, it looks like we are. It looks like we're streaming live on the yeah. Quantum Healing uh, and Beyond page. Uh, but for those of you who want to actually um, engage with us um, via the um, question and answer box. Being on the webinar is probably your best bet. Multidimensionality, though, what is that? First, uh, Mary is a quantum healer. She, how long have you been doing the work, Mary? When did you when did you take the class with Dolores? I'm not remembering exactly. That's a great question, Candace. I, was it 2005 or 2007? Or, oh I, my I gosh, it couldn't have been that long. No, 2000, I could go in my room, my room over there and look at my certificate. I don't remember. <laughs> it, it couldn't have been that early. I didn't no. meet Dolores myself till 2008. No. And I know that I yeah. met you uh, at least a couple of years after that. But, I think, uh, you I know, think when, you, when you live multidimensionally, you don't know what year it is. So. <laughs> what? Uh, I was just getting ready to say that. This yeah. thing with time, right? Time is changing. It's so malleable. It's a very strange thing. Both our short-term time frame, our short-term memory, and even longer spans. And these are the kinds of conversations that quantum healers like Mary and myself talk about just when we chat informally. And we were doing that just a little bit ago. And we said, you know what, why don't we just have a show? So that's what we're doing today. We're just kind of bringing you all in to the kind of conversations that we talk about our own lives, our day to day living, and of course, the lives and session stories of our client. Absolutely. And so this was um, something that Mary really wanted to talk about. So I'm going to let her start talking about the whole concept. What even is multidimensional living, Mary? Yeah, so it's interesting. Um, I had this funny thought a few weeks ago, and I think this is what you and I were talking about, which was that, you know, we all know we're living in a time that's different from any other time. You know, human beings have the opportunity not just to have their nose down in the ground digging or, you know, scra scratching a living out of the earth or, um, you know, just spending their lives trying to stay warm. We have such an opportunity to really turn our attention upwards to the stars, to the universe, to thinking more about what this all means. And that coincides with really a change in the, the world and the ascension process, as we, as we call it. Um, and I remember years and years ago going to a uh, Greg Braden weekend at Kerpalu. And it was when he was just starting out, there were only about 20 of us in the, in the room. And he kept saying, this is a new time. This is a new opportunity. This is a new opening. And the earth is giving, has labor pains and is giving birth to itself in this wonderful. So, so, you know, I think this is a very different time. And I had the funny thought I had a few weeks ago was that the multitasking that we've been doing for so many years, the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and the early zips, you know, how everyone was just doing so many different things at once was practice for living multidimensionally. 
Oh my gosh, isn't that correct? And oh, I hate to say this, but the almost hate to say this, the the fact that women do that so much better. Sorry, all you guys out there, but that's the first thought in <laughs> my mind. You know, because we we do this multitasking, and 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 we all know that there are more more females in this work than than males but i think it's also it's not really about our sex it's about the rise of the divine feminine as well and mm -hmm. and some of the things that have we as women have been called upon to do you know the the men have had a singular focus and we've had to take care of a lot more things than that mm -hmm. and uh, i think you're right um it's also making us tired though isn't it? <laughs> well, I don't know. How, I don't know how how to answer that. <laughs> I think. Um, but what's interesting to me is, you know, I'm not happy anymore unless I'm multitasking, and you know, I think, um, and, you know, even you with the two computers right now, you know, um, it's it's just that we're so used to doing so many different things at once. And you know, what I say to my clients who come to to see me for um, hypnosis and for past life regression work is really all that the hypnosis does is lower your resistance to seeing yourself multidimensionally, because there are so many ways in which we can look at this multidimensionality idea. One is just the mundane, everyday multitasking, where you know we're asked to become aware of everything that we're doing, to be hyper aware. Um, when I think of the early work of, you know, remember that book, The Celestine Prophecy? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. My husband brought that one home before I did, as a matter yeah. of fact, I remember. Mm -hmm. And I remember reading it and just going, oh my God, this is, you know, so, so like kindergarten. But at the same time, it awakened so many people to just the idea of looking at coincidences. and bringing your awareness just to that next level up of paying attention to coincidences and then seeing what's in your path and seeing what books fall off the shelf and seeing. So living multidimensionally has this aspect of just being more aware within the mundane moments of your life, you know, just, you know, what falls in my path? What are the breadcrumbs that I'm following? Who mentioned that writer or that book? So there's that level of awareness. Then, then what happens, I think, once you practice that long enough is that then you begin to get intuitive flashes and you begin to anticipate the, um, the books and the phone calls and the people and the, you know, all those things begin to be um, something that's already known to you. And then that becomes kind of normal. And then you start getting really weird, I think, after that. Um, but so, you know, then you start becoming, dipping in and out of other lifetimes. You know, I think, I mean, we could get right to it. At this, I think once somebody has had a quantum healing hypnosis session, they really have access to their other lifetimes. And then you really do begin to live multidimensionally. If you're aware of what's going on in those other lifetimes and how they're affecting you and even how you're affecting them. I think these are really great points. You know what I loved uh, as you were beginning to describe this is you used a hand gesture and you went like this and you and I are such visual people. You know, we come from a world of imagery and artwork and um, just love your space, by the way, and your colors. It's so <laughs> wonderful to be so fresh and orange and pink this morning. But when you did this, it, it made me think that, you know, for the longest time, we've kind of had like this, this vision through a straw. You know, we were only noticing one thing at a time. And when you went like this, I thought, you know, that's like opening up the lens mm -hmm. and paying attention to what's going around you. Because this idea that the universe is your mirror and is actually giving you information, this field, the, you know, the universe is for, it's not just this static, unliving or not living space. It's everything is responding to you. Trees, birds, plants, the wind, all of that can give information to you as a person, as a multidimensional person, mm -hmm. if you just open your mind to that. Don't you agree? Oh, I absolutely agree. And, you know, one of my favorite um, uh, paths that the Buddhists um, um, suggest living is that you walk through the world as the most humble person where everybody that you meet is your teacher. 
and that you're just a dummy, you know, and I love that feeling because I love being the dummy, the fool. You know, I don't know if you do the tarot deck, but in the tarot deck, of course, the fool is the one stepping off the mountain, happily looking up at the sun. And, you know, so living um, in a way where everybody you meet is your teacher from the smallest child to the oldest person you meet um, is so wonderful. But to expand that into nature itself and into all the elements of your life um, and then most challenging of all, probably situations, you know, challenging situations where you just say, I could not have created this. Why would I have created this? Why? And then sitting in that knowing and saying, okay, I'm going to understand this in a year, or maybe I'll understand this in 20 years, but I guess this, I created this for some reason. Um, but yeah, living multidimensionally, I think, is being open to the all of nature and all of the elements around you um, and letting them speak to you on some level. And I think if we're going to really talk about living multidimensionally, we have to then expand that to um, galactic living, right? I mean, how many people do we know? I'm not lucky enough to be one of them, but um, how many people do we know who speak star language and who communicate with, um, I guess in my sessions, I sometimes talk to people on spaceships <laughs> often. Um, but, um, you know, I don't, in, you know, know how to do that on my own, but that is another, that's another level, isn't it? Do you do that, Candace? You know who does that or did that was my firstborn grandson. Um, for the first two years of his life, he spoke star language and it was astonishing. And as I sort of figured would happen, it slowly went away and he is now starting to speak English and he's not really using uh, those words anymore. But when he was a very small toddler, he was gesturing and talking in these and you, you would hear repeated words and you would hear syntax and you would hear, and this child, um, his mother and I both agree he's not ever been human before. And the yeah. very fact that we can talk about that in our family like that, you know, Theodore, well, this is the first time he's human. Can you imagine even seeing such a thing, uh, uh, you know, even a decade ago? I mean, the whole concept, that's another form of living multidimensionally. And, and, and this idea of star language or light language, actually, I've got a story about that. Have you had clients come in who can speak the light language or who can write the light language. That's another form of multidimensionality. Yeah, I, I can't remember if I, I don't think I, I have actually, I've read so many sessions where people have, but I've had people speak um, through um, somebody on another planet, but I haven't had them speak star language, I don't think. They've had sung, they've been singing. I've had some singing. Oh, I yeah. love the singing. I love yeah. the singing. Well, here's a really fun thing. You and I both have a, a colleague. His name is Pedro Frias. He uh, lives and works in Portugal. And Pedro and I did a, well, he does this wonderful version of quantum healing. He calls timeline therapy. And hmm. I said, Pedro, I need to know more about that. And he was telling me about it. And I said, no, I really need to know more about it. As in, you need to I want to do it, right? Yeah. So we did this not long ago and listen to what happened, Mary. First off, it was an amazing session. Um, I was very conscious. I mean, I, very aware of what was going on. I, I, you know, you can speak in several levels. There's the part of me that's having the experience, the part of my conscious mind that's going, well, this is that part of me having this experience. But probably one of the most interesting things that happened, happened afterwards. And that's why I'm bringing it up. It was very late. It was very late in Portugal. It was late for me here. So you know how late it was in Portugal. And when we shut down the session and I, I headed off to bed, when I closed my eyes, you know, you all, we all have seen that, that written light language, those sort of symbol things. I closed my eyes. My vision was filled, filled, mm -hmm. filled, filled with those symbols. And I'm just watching them move and morph. And I'm looking at it going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And it didn't last long, meaning I didn't have it the next day. But here's the, here's the additionally interesting part. The same thing happened to Pedro that night. Interesting. Yeah. 
So isn't that another way, this, this uh, living multidimensionally, when we as quantum healers do these sessions, when we sit with a client and we enter that space, wow, we're as much a part of this and benefit as much sometimes as the client. Mm -hmm. Oh, no question. I mean, I had a client um, a couple of years ago who in the middle of her session, she stopped what she was talking about, she was under hypnosis, she was in a past life doing something, it was a sort of mundane past life. And out of nowhere, a voice came through and she said, Mary, Mary. And I was like, yes. And they said, we want you to speak the sacred words <clears throat> every day. And then they did a Sanskrit prayer for me. Oh, and I said, who are you? And they said, we're in the sky. <laughs> I was like, okay. And they said, stop looking for us in the sky and look for us in your heart. And out of nowhere, and then she began to speak. She was a hairdresser from um, upstate New York. She had barely gone to college. She had barely, you know, did much reading. And she's speaking in ancient Sanskrit to me. So yeah, that's a form of star language, I guess. But and telling me precisely for me which, which sacred words I should speak every day. And then she cut off. It was as if like we interrupt this broadcast, um, cut off, came, and then she went back to saying whatever her life was. And she had no memory of that at all. And I asked That's her if she knew ancient Sanskrit, and she didn't. That's so amazing. And it goes back to what you were saying earlier. Having sessions like this opens up a door. Mm -hmm. It just sort of, so even in the session itself, there was a portion of time where that connection was made. And maybe, I mean, did you find out? Maybe she had lived in a time when that was a common language. So she's accessing this past life. Yeah, uh, we, I, didn't end, I didn't end up asking that, but that's a great question. You know, you make me think of something funny, which was I went to a really fun psychic um, circle. I don't really usually do things like this, but a friend of mine invited me. And I happened to be free that afternoon on a weekend, which is very unusual. And so she said, we have this psychic coming from LA who, um, you know, there are 10 people in the room and she basically will go around the room and give each person some information. And I was like, yeah, yeah, this will be interesting. <laughs> like, we'll see. But it was astonishing. And she went to each person and really just zeroed right in on them. And then when she got to me, she said, I'm being told not to talk about your past. And um, she said a few really interesting things about um, Hindu gods and goddesses standing behind me in a huge long line. Um, but then she said, I'm, I'm looking at the kind of work you do. And she said, do you create wormholes in the universe? And, <laughs> and I just burst into laughter. She was like, because I see you shooting, out into, shooting yourself out into the universe through these wormholes. And what is that? And I said, I'm a, I'm a past life reg regressionist, but I really a quantum regressionist since we don't always go in the past, we go in the future sometimes. And she said, oh, that makes perfect sense because I see you shooting out through these holes in the universe. And, you know, how can you help but live multidimensionally when you're doing that kind of thing, right? Absolutely. I, and then I, now I'm brought back to what you were saying about living as the dummy. I don't know about you. Is it, isn't it interesting? We do, I think, some of the best possible work you, one human could do on the planet today. This is, this is so much fun. Yet at the same time... I think we're losing our connection. Hang on. Um, I, you... I've got a nice, strong one. Okay. So, All right. We're uh, back. We're back. We just had okay. a little blip. Uh, okay. So uh, go ahead. We, uh, yeah, I was talking about um, opening up and um, connecting in this way being able to to reach into these other realms and having this information come forward is is so amazing and yet um i love the fact that you went to the psychic and you were sort of skeptical you know i'm one of the i, I can be very skeptical myself believe it or not even though we do this work, oh i'm incredibly some, skeptical even of the work i do so <laughs> i don't know I what know, to believe <laughs> we are so woo woo we we make room for everything but I think actually that part about being skeptical, people come and tell me stuff and I'm like, well, okay. And I don't 
I don't do the thing which is very um, disruptive and not helpful, which is trying to disprove. I never no, do that. I don't either. You know, mm -hmm. trying to disprove that shuts down the magic. But I'm like, okay, but I don't believe everything. And here's another thing: I don't think that I know everything. And when I run across people who think they know, who think they've got it all figured out, that's some of the funniest things to me right now of of everything for people yeah. to say it must be this way it, it right. has to and i know because that to me is some of the funniest thing any human being can say on the planet today <laughs> uh, absolutely as soon as you get it figured out it's going to unravel but it's interesting because you know i think that as woo woo as i am is equally as skeptical as i am because i mean even i think it wasn't until I had a session about a year ago with somebody where they said something that blew my mind so much that they couldn't possibly have known that was from a, it was from somebody who was on a spaceship looking down at us and talking to me about something about myself and I just couldn't believe it. And that was the most unskeptical I think I've ever been in my life because I love to think about how crazy and wild the world is in the universe. And I mean, that's why I do this work. And, you know, when I found Dolores Cannon, she combined everything, you know, history, regressions, really, really rigorous journalism and reporting, um, UFOs, it all, it all came together under. So if I spend the rest of my life just exploring this stuff and it turns out it's all a bunch of crap, I don't care. It's such a fun ride. But, um, <laughs> You know, I'm thinking, so this multidimensional thing, I was just thinking about a session um, I had in which it was so wonderful. Uh, this woman was a fish in, in one part of the life. And then in another life, she was on a spaceship with this wonderful guide named Athena. And one of the things Athena said to us was um, that crop circles are galactic apps which was such an amazing line. That's an amazing line, right? Oh, um, that to, to look at them would be to access multidimensionality, right? So I just love that because it brought together, of course, apps, which we're all, of course, looking at every second and, um, and, and, the, and space and time. So I thought that was great. That's great. And you know, the internet makes such a great analogy for what we're going through right now. And, and I know I heard Dolores say it in classes about how it's just practice for what we're going to do without all of these machines at some point. But you know, going back to Dolores, gosh, you know, it's been years now, even since she's crossed over, but her work still resonates. She is people are still finding her. And one of the things that I loved so much about our dear beloved teacher is the fact that she talked about how she expanded as she did this work mm -hmm. and how she was so open and, and interested and curious back when she was just talking to somebody about simple past lives. And then as she did the work over and over again, she talked about being fed like a baby, spoonfuls at a time. But that woman in her entire almost 50 years of doing this work just kept expanding and, and acknowledging and growing all the way into her mid 80s. This wonderful woman gave us such a legacy about how you can start this way, but, but then you just keep expanding and growing in that way. And I, yeah. I just love that. that it's interesting because, you know, I, I went back to one of her early books um, last summer. I was reading one of the first books she wrote, and there's nothing about being anything except humans and humans in the past. And so she says, well, we used to, we, even in the introduction to the book, it's all about how um, this extraordinary thing, we used to live in the past and other lifetimes. And there was nothing about future lifetimes. There was nothing about being as we know, you know, clients are now things like raindrops and stones and crystals and flowers and elves and fairies. And, you know, um, my, the funniest one I had recently was a man who was a uh, brown frog in a space uniform in his spaceship, you know, collecting wow. samples on the earth. Um, wow. You know, so Dolores um, <laughs> absolutely went from just thinking people had a few past lives to 
just getting bigger and bigger and bigger until I remember the last time we saw, I saw her was at the reunion. Um, I think just a month before she died, probably right. Two months. And it wasn't long. Yeah. It was a couple of months. She died in October. We probably had the reunion that summer. Or something. It was in July, maybe, or August. So, um, and she said, she reiterated this thing she always said, which was, they just keep telling me we haven't even barely cracked the door yet. Yes. And, you know, it's just so extraordinary to think of what could be coming. What I love too about her was she would talk about those early days and she would say, it's really good that she didn't have somebody who was a raindrop or a frog or a crystal because you know what? She wasn't ready. No. Uh, her mind wasn't expanded enough and she would have said, oh, this is all ridiculous. And she would have just quit, which is, I think it's a great metaphor for all of us. You know, we expand as we are capable of expanding. And if you look at our society, gosh, Mary, I think about this all the time. You know, I think about this all the time, how programmed we are, how absolutely programmed we are. I mean, our, our mutual friend, beautiful Pamela Erlen is doing this amazing channeling this afternoon of the Archangel Lucifer mm -hmm. and just posting and sharing that on Facebook. Even people in our community who do this work, this great big thing of, fear and judgment and 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 this and, and this thinking that that they know everything like you know comes out and i'm like what i mean it's really really interesting so some people aren't ready for that even people right. in our community not ready for that and some people aren't even ready for the idea of past lives and all of that's okay but it talks about how we are moving into our multi-dimensionality usually incrementally mm -hmm. It's interesting. One of my favorite, favorite moments in one of Dolores's convoluted books is when she says that if somebody visited us from the past, even just a hundred years ago, that we would be glowing. Do you remember that line? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I do. Yeah. That we would glow because we contain so much more light now than we used to. And, you know, when you look at those old photographs of people from a couple of hundred years ago, they just are different from us. We're just different. And, yeah. you know, um, every person on this planet right now, it feels is more, holds more light and has the capability of holding more light than people in the past. And I think that's what I was talking about, about this rare opportunity that's happening now to live multidimensionally. Um, and I, I want to get back a little bit to the sort of ABCs of that, because I think it has to be a conscious effort. Um, you know, I was listening to Judy Satori's latest um, moon regenesis um, channeling, and she talks about holding a sacred space for conversation with your galactic ancestors or your galactic home or whatever. And she says, light a candle and just set an intention for 10 minutes a day to communicate. Um, that's a wonderful practice. Meditation is a wonderful practice, of course. Asking for multidimensionality, asking for access to that. I sometimes will just lie in bed with my eyes closed if I can't sleep and ask for um, a download. And I will begin to see the star language and see the, you know, for those of you who don't know what that looks like, um, if you've seen the matrix at the very end when, um, Neo walks into that space. I can't remember exactly how it happened. I need to watch that movie again, but those lines of the programming, you see that that's what that looks like in your eyes when you close them and it just starts raining down these beautiful hieroglyphics and symbols. Um, and then of course, paying attention to our dream life. Um, and so I get a lot, 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 lot of clients who discover when they come to have a session that they're doing all of this work in other galaxies and dimensions while they're asleep, of course. And so that is how we live multidimensionally. And I, and I think that we're so used now to multitasking with our phones in one hand, our computer here, then the television's on maybe, or <laughs> we're answering the phone, house phone, or we're, you know, paying attention, folding laundry and cooking and, you know, so, I think that um, it's a, if you shift the focus away from the mundane moments of our lives and shift it to the slightly next place, 
then it becomes dreams, meditation, um, uh, intuition, synchronicities, breadcrumbs. So if people want ch and choose to live that kind of life, um, all it is is a shift in focus and awareness and having a cultivating a taste for and a love of living a kind of more um, life at a slightly higher elevation. You know what I mean? Not, not better but just simply focusing on something a little bit higher than can I pay the grocery bill right now? You know? <laughs> so you change that to, well, of course I can because money always flows to me and blah, blah, blah. So um, I think that it's a choice how you want to live. I think that's a great way of putting it. And, and this idea of light, uh, as you've been talking about it, and you know, if we would go back a hundred years and we would be glowing, course I'm thinking of walking through all of the amazing museums of the world and seeing the people with the halos you know with the with the gold behind them you know with the Christ you know glowing like that and we, we you know and what what did we do as kids well that's a ring you know that's over here and it floats right. around but I think that's kind of what that was we use this term light and I don't know about you but even when I first heard it I thought oh that's just metaphorical but right it's not it's not a metaphor. It's actually light. It's, yeah, it's we, light. we talked about this the other day. I think it was you and I that were, who were speaking. Um, I saw on my client's chest some sparks, like literally bouncing up and down on his chest. And it, it looked as if sparklers were, you know, when sparklers drop a couple of sparkles, um, you know, it looked as if they were just bouncing on his chest. And it was right when um, his higher self was coming in at the end of the session. Um, and I, and I, I kept blinking and, and then it left, of course, after a, a few seconds. But, you know, that was light, right? I saw it. Yeah, it was. And not just in your mind's eye, but actually in, with your physical eyes. The same thing is happening with all of our senses. Um, the other day, and since, since I've I don't know, just since this year, even though my eyes still, I mean, both, and I, both you and I have glasses on, but my ears are getting, this doesn't happen, I'm 56 this year, my ears are getting more sensitive. I can hear things I shouldn't be able to hear. Uh, it wasn't long ago, I was in my folding laundry, uh, listening to something, and I heard someone walking in my kitchen, and I nobody was here, nobody was at the farm, it's late at night, and I hear, boom, boom, boom in the kitchen. And that sounds like, it sounded like a full grown man or a stout woman with socks, not with shoes or anything, but moving through the kitchen. I'm like, who the heck is here? And I do the thing, do, am, I, am I hearing that physically or in my head? You know how you can do that. And I'm like, no, yeah. I'm, I, I'm hearing that physically. And I, I walk to the kitchen to investigate. God, you're so brave. I don't think I could live alone oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, what are you going to do? You know, so I walked to yeah. the kitchen to investigate. I'm like, what the hell? And do you know what? I, 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 it got louder as I got, as I was there because I'm getting closer to the footsteps. Mary, it was my cat. And I have a, oh, I have wow. a cats, but this was the big one. I mean, he's 20 pounds, but, but that was, steps were, and I know that was a, an expansion of that sense, right? Mm -hmm. So just like our, just like our sight, I think other senses are also doing this kind of expansion thing where there's more information coming through, but incrementally, because no one can live like that right now with sparkles and beams of light and all of that. That's, you know, I think Teal Swan calls it her filters were blown. Mm -hmm. You know, she talks about, she, I just got goosebumps saying that. So that mm -hmm. must be true. So she was born where the sparkles and the steps and all of that was happening all the time. And you don't do well in a society that doesn't understand that. She didn't even mm -hmm. understand that herself till much later, but that's what's happening to us in dribs and drabs and, and bits and pieces. Don't you think? I do. I th it's interesting because um, I was taught at a very young age that if you have any psychic gifts whatsoever, if one has psychic gifts whatsoever, that one should never discuss them and one should never even really talk about things that happen because they will be taken away. 
And I'm wondering if that was nobody else told that like it will appear that you're showing off or it will appear. Um, and so even for me, you know, I do have psychic flashes and I, I sometimes think I, you know, I think I know things or hear things or, but I'm very hesitant to embrace that because of a kind of a, a fear that's left over from those days of thinking that will get taken away. And I'm wondering if that's just old thinking. Is that old? I got burned at the stake thinking. Is that, you know, I think so. you know, it's interesting. I live in the Bible belt. You know, I live in the buckle of the Bible belt and I mm -hmm. have people who come to see me and I've actually had members of the same family come to see me to talk to me about different things and they tell me in private and of course this is therapy so we don't share so right. i'm sitting there listening to this person tell me that no one in their family is going to understand these things that are happening all these things that we've been talking about today and yet that person in their family had come to see me two months prior that's so and funny <laughs> and they're but and they're wonderful people wonderful church going heart people sitting next to them each other in church afraid to tell the other right what is happening to them i have to think it's programming but it's also programming kind of in this way it's a programming um that may assist you meaning yeah you know you and i both know that we have these people these clients who experience this incredible quote unquote miraculous unbelievable healings and I used to think early in my work, you know, nine, 10 years ago, I used to think, oh, now they're going to go tell everyone. And a lot of them, as a matter of fact, the majority of them don't. And I used to think, what's the matter with them? Yeah. Well, there's some wisdom. There's some wisdom in there. Because yeah. if you lay out this miracle and you get the backlash of that's not possible, this is crazy, you are deluded, they are fooling you, you are dealing with things you shouldn't be dealing with, or whatever programming is coming through, mm -hmm. then that miracle can slowly just go away. It gets right? eroded, doesn't it? But there is this thing, I, I, I've run into that before. I often share my dreams and I have people who, people in our own community who are like, oh, you really shouldn't do that. And I think, well, I don't know. I think I'm built to do that or born to do that. And I have felt nothing uh, but supported, comforted, and make more connections when I do. But that doesn't mean that's right for everybody because these things are precious, right? Mm -hmm. And if you get too much. Well, I think the, the, that's part of your open, honest, multidimensional living, because then you do share your dreams. I, I just remembered my dream from last night that I meant to tell you about, because we've had, we ha a few weeks ago, remember I dreamt that I was at the phone, phone store getting my phone fixed? Yeah, my, my iPhone had broken, and um, we were talking on the phone the next day, and you said, my iPhone's broken, and I have to go get another one. And it was such a funny little coincidence. Um, or I guess we call it a coincidence, right? <clears throat> but last night I had a dream that my husband and I were at a kind of, um, oh, I love these movies with Wolverine. What are they called? The, um, Wolverine and Werewolf? it's like the moot, the mutants, the kids who are all mutants who live, go to that school. So my husband and I were at a school like that. And, um, we were teaching, we were being taught how to ride these hovercraft. Cool. So you didn't have a dream like that, did you, last night? <laughs> I did not have a dream like that, but I do have, uh, not last night, and actually, let's keep talking. I, I probably need to be prompted and remember what I did dream. But that thing with the phone, we actually didn't talk on the phone. You know what we did? We, we, we were, were texting. texting. Because um, I was using my computer to text, and I was telling oh, okay. them that, that, oh my gosh. Uh, so, she, so Mary said her phone was broken, and, and then... Listen to what happened. This is so crazy how this even happened with my phone. I've been trying to listen to my own meditation, the, the seashore to starship meditation that I did back um, in October at Michelle Walling's and I, uh, my conference in Sarasota where we had all those wonderful quantum healers. And so many people went to these other planets during this. It's, it's a half hour meditation. It's on YouTube. I'll, I'll put the link in the, in the comments. 
and I hadn't myself listened to it mm -hmm, to myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was, there was another quiet night and I actually mm -hmm. ran a bath full of salt water and I put uh, the phone nearby and I have a ledge behind me, but sometimes that, that 20 pound cat. Uh oh. <laughs> and I, didn't I see want, where this is going. <laughs> yeah, well, I, yeah, I didn't want to put it on this ledge. There's actually a lip and a ledge, but the cat could possibly. So I put it behind the faucet, right? The, the bathtub. I have a, I have a walking tub and I'm, I can sit up to here in the water. Mm. I just love oh, it. Lovely. Oh, lovely. It's like a Japanese bath, but kind mm. of the wrong shape. But mm. um, so I put it back there. And again, this is a half hour meditation. I've got the rubber thing, it's behind there. And it's so quiet and, and the cats are all asleep and I'm complete, it's this, the house is so quiet. I'm about 15 minutes into this meditation. That phone hits the water. There's no movement in the room. There's no reason for it to have jumped over the faucet and into the bathtub. I, I mean, of course I didn't, I still haven't listened to my own meditation. <laughs> I pulled that thing out and I, and I took care of it. And it was squirrely for a couple of days, but I put it in desiccant. Uh, but here's what I wanted to what I wanted to say about that was I how I don't know how many people do you know that whose phones were completely submerged, not only in water but salt water. Yeah. And, uh, and it came back to life. But I was traveling just a couple of days ago. I was moving in the, uh, through Austin through uh, the Dallas airport, and I couldn't get I couldn't get my uh, my earbuds plugged into the port and I hadn't done that since it fell into the water. And I'm like, Oh no, did it rust in there? Is there something in there? What's going on? And I was walking through the airport and I was thinking about this choosing timelines, how we choose timelines. And I'm like, look, I was get, telling myself this. I already choose the t I chose the timeline where I didn't have to buy a new phone because that sucker is expensive right, and it right. wasn't that old. And I'm like, you know, I didn't have, I, I moved into the timeline where dunking it in water, submerging it in water was, was not a problem. Why couldn't I have moved to a timeline or I'm going to move to a timeline where I can plug in this, this head port. And I was on the plane trying to do it like 20 times. And I thought, okay. And so when I got to the next gate, I thought I'm taking every step to this new timeline. I'm moving to this new timeline, to this new timeline. I got to the next gate. I sat down, I got out my earplugs, put it in. Bam. It worked. Now, one can come up with all kinds of reasons why walking may have made it work or whatever. But I think when you open yourself up to this idea that you can do that, that you can walk into another timeline like that, you can. I think, you know, it's interesting because I'm thinking of Bashar, and I think Bashar is one of the channels who um, talks about this in such an interesting way that every time we blink, we're really in a different, not just a different timeline, but a different dimension. Um, and he talked about this idea that, you know, I worked with a young woman who was um, a very, very serious heroin addict, and she... Um, we did a whole lot of healing work on her and she woke up the next morning and all of her scars were gone. She had had scars all over her neck and all over her arms that were, you know, I don't know, five or six or seven or eight years of <coughs> intravenous drug use. Um, I don't even know if it's called intravenous, but she was infected all over her body and she woke up and her scars were gone. And um, we were told that she had jumped timelines to a timeline where she had not been an addict and that all of her cravings were gone at that point. She didn't want to use drugs anymore. And so her body, she had a new body. And that was just incredible in terms of living multidimensionally. You know, it's like, well, I can jump timelines to a timeline where, you know, I wasn't an addict. And so I began to use that model um, for people who were coming to me with trauma. Um, I had a young woman who came here the other day who had extraordinary trauma from witnessing um, a friend of hers who drowned um, during a sailing um, class. and. Um, we went back in time and um, back to when she was a little girl and her first lifetime, um, she was um, anxious, 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 worried about her family, all kinds of things. And it turned out that the anxiety had been from when she was a little girl, not from the sailing accident, that the sailing accident had been a permission slip really to just access all of that anxiety. 
because she didn't want to put that burden on her family that that um, her father had been away in um, Afghanistan for many, many years. Um, and her mother had really struggled with that. And she didn't want to put it on her parents that her anxiety had been caused by that situation. And so when she watched this friend die, who she really didn't know that well, um, she, that whole, everything just came streaming through and um, all of that anxiety. And so what we did was we went back to when she was just a little girl and um, we talked to her. We put her on the young woman's lap and said, you're going to be okay. You don't need to be frightened. Your father's coming home from the war. Your mother's going to be, everything's going to be fine. You are going to see somebody drown, but it's not going to bother you that much because you know life goes on and blah, blah, blah. So, but I learned those tricks from reading the forum. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, you can't learn all that in a few weekends with Dolores, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, the teaching that continues through the work that you do with the, um, I don't know if anybody... I don't know if any practitioners are watching, but of course, I'm sure they could speak to this as well. You know, when we post our sessions and um, we read other people's sessions, we all are learning from each other. And some of the tricks that I do now, um, I absolutely, and I call them tricks, but they're methods. <laughs> right. You yeah. know, um, have been learned through um, reading how other people do this. And even, you know, Dolores's books help tremendously as well, because this is, this work is, is terrifying sometimes, you know, when you don't, you don't always know where people are going or what's happening or people are crying and terrible things are happening. And, and, you know, what do you, what do I do? And so that support is, is just huge. Well, thank you so much for bringing oh, that. Sure. You know, a lot of people, um, I learned just as much as, as everybody, you know, I've been doing this for 10 years and I am consistently learning sometimes even from the brand new people. Who yes, show up absolutely. Our <laughs> yeah. so, so this, you know, the learning just never ends and our community is, is quite wonderful. And now that we've expanded to invite healers of all kinds, we're learning even more in different approaches and different ways of looking at things. And I just love that. So thank you for, for bringing that up. Yeah, that's interesting because I haven't really had a chance to look at some of the other categories, but I think you have people on there now who aren't just um, QHHT people and who aren't just hypnosis people, right? You have all sorts. Yeah. yeah. You know, just as we are living multidimensionally, um, we're sort of practicing multidimensionally. We are using all of the different things that we've learned um, whether it be Reiki or Akashic Records reading. What's really fun for me, though, is to bring in these really sort of different focus. We've got a couple people who are coming in who are coming in through the schools of yoga, you know, the mm -hmm. body body movement and nutrition and that sort of energy field. And, and their focus is, is quite different than, than ours, which is, you know, so focused on the on oh, the so cool. Yeah. But we, you know, our bodies are so much a part of why we're here being human. And we can't do this separation thing anymore. If you try to box stuff in, it just doesn't quite work. And it's so limiting. So that's why we've opened up the forum to really anyone who's practicing service to others. You know, it's, if it's like the like the bar in um, like the bar in Star Wars now. <laughs> Right? You got that. a little bit of everybody. I love that so much. You know what I love so much about, about getting older is that when I think of being like 10 or 11 or 12 years old and being so interested in the universe and hearing that there were aliens maybe and strange things and, um, you know, there was nothing. There was nothing out there. There were hardly any books, you know. I mean, who knew that, that Alice Bailey existed or that, you know, Madame Blavatsky existed? Because those books were out of print. Um, and, you know, we found a little bit of Edgar Cayce and then maybe Ruth Montgomery and, you know, the little teeny tiny tidbits. And then when Reiki classes started, it was like, oh, I can learn how to do some healing, you know. And then, oh, there's the next one. And then all of a sudden, now there are so many modalities that I don't even know what I would have done when I was a kid because I got to go so slowly. I mean, we talk about that expansion from the beginning of the of our talk. You know, I got to start like a little tiny seed and expand. 
And now I feel as if people have to turn themselves into a, something little tiny and find a little spot because there's so much. And when people say to me, what should I read? Where do I begin? I kind of just go like, I have no freaking idea. <laughs> like, how, how do I, how do I, you know, and I had just recommended the Celestine prophecy to somebody the other day, because really to just begin books like the four agreements, you know, or the Celestine prophecy, um, really early. What is that noise? Is that you? It's, it's coming from you, my dear, not from me. <laughs> not I don't from know here. what that is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what a weird noise. Either. Yeah, sounded like a worry. cricket. It did. It did sound maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe somebody's trying to tell you something. I, you know, you were talking about the session with the heroin addict. It reminded me of a really great session I had recently that I'd like to talk about. And so actually this session was done online, um, a quantum healing session that I had done online. And this certain gentleman, he'd actually, um, he was an older gentleman, a little bit older than me. And he had, when he was just 18 months old, he had a, a pot of scalding coffee um, poured over his whole body. It was such a severe burn. It was critical. It was, oh my gosh. It was, it was really, really awful. And he had just terrible burns throughout his body. And, but it happened so long ago, but he remembered it all. And he, and this is, I just love this story. And this is where we can make these connections, you know, and make these um through things that are going on, but he came from a very religious family and his mother and, and members of the church went on this prayer vigil. And not only did he heal completely, I'm buzzing just getting ready to tell this story. Mm -hmm. Not only did he heal completely from these burn wounds, it happened much like what you're talking happened with the scars. He actually uh, woke up as, as, a, as a baby, they, were, they found him in a crib one morning. The story is his mother told him that they went to go get him out of the crib. And he was, uh, except for a very small place on his body, just a very tiny place, the scar tissue had fallen off of him and was laying on the side of the bed. And it was together like this cocoon. And it was there. And he... This was after That's like this, this prayer vigil with, right, with all these people. But yeah. here's what's even more crazy. I can't wait to tell you this part. So one of the things I do to get people ready sometimes to do these sessions is, well, here's a way you can practice a little bit. And there was a little place where, uh, again, on YouTube, I've got, it's just a regression practice. Actually, a colleague of ours, wonderful um, um, uh, Alice, did this uh, regression on me. and. I, I watched um, um, in, in the session that she, she did with me, I opened up my closet and something surprising in there. So I took that recording and that's now available for others to, to, to play along with and see if you, know, if you want to do that sort of, you go to your closet and you open up the closet and you wanna see what it is that you see. And I asked my client, did you do that practice regression? Mm -hmm. and, she, and he said, yes. And I said, well, what did you see? He said, it was the most amazing thing. He said, I, there were my coats and everything in there, but right on, on the, the, the shoulder of one of the coats was this absolutely giant butterfly, this blue butterfly that just was opening and closing its wings and opening and closing its wings. But we didn't put any of those things together until we got to the higher self portion of the session. Mm -hmm. And he, and then the higher self talked about the cocoon. Oh, wow of being a baby mm -hmm. and then we talked about and i asked about the trauma of the burn when he was a baby what that did and the higher self explained that he basically uh awoke as an 18 month old baby during that traumatic event with the assistance of the praying and it all came together in a quantum healing session that he had 65 years yes, later all those years later yeah well yeah. that's because time doesn't exist right <laughs> so. right 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 yeah it's just it was just incredible uh, i'm just so so pleased to be able to to witness that with him and for him it was just this this such a magic you know so many 
dots of his life were connected by having this session, having, you know, and, 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 and it starts again before the session even started, you know, right. after we connected and I make us a couple suggestions and they show up and don't you find that happens as well? People show up either yeah. with dreams or synchronicities. Well, what's crazy is I had a client who showed up the other day who I knew from, um, oh, you know him. Um, we did a, we did a bio healing workshop with him, um, together. Um, remember him? Yes, <laughs> He's do. such a charmer. Anyway, he, he arrived at, at our QHHT session and this is somebody who's had tremendous trauma throughout his whole childhood, really, really severe trauma. And he suffered from it enormously. And he came in, he sat down and he said, I feel as if we should just be day drinking. And I was like, what? And he said, I'm healed. He said, I, I did everything you told me to do. I paid attention to synchronicities. I kept track of my dreams. I waited for signs and things. He said, but I've been waking up the last few mornings and I can't access the person who hates me. He used to have all of this self-hate talk, self-hate talk. And so he, um, he said, I feel as if we can just sit here and chat all day and I don't even need a session. I mean, we had a session anyway, which was wonderful, but, um, you know, he said, so essentially what happens, I think, is that the minute you hear Dolores's name or make the appointment or whatever it is, the healing, you give a permission slip to the universe and the universe has just been waiting, your guides, your healers, your ancestors, whoever, they've all those benevolent forces have just been waiting for you to say, you know what, I need some help. And it just comes pouring in and they make my job so much easier because when people show up here they've just been they, all the prep work has been done you know all i have to do is kind of put the salad together a little bit with them and so i totally agree you know there's something so magical about these sessions and the universe's help and it's just so much fun, fun. so much fun and um yeah, I, yeah. It, it really, it really is. How many times have, have you come in and they, and they have their questions, you know, and then they go, yeah, well, I had all these until this morning. <laughs> they just like want to throw their questions and they're, you know, they're, they're, they're gone already. And it's, yeah, I think it's once you make the decision, you know, okay, I'm ready. You know, I'm ready to, to make a change. And that doesn't happen with everyone. But don't you find it happens more now than it used to yes. than when yes. we first started doing this, even though it yeah. did happen years ago it's happening more and more i sort of expect it to happen now in a way that i didn't used to and the other thing that's happening a lot more and i i can't remember who this conversation happened with but um the idea that when you're in a in a healing session with somebody no matter what kind of session it is that it's easier to enter the field with them so that you're seeing the same thing at the same time it's almost like joining a video game, you know, where you have a second person who comes in because I find so often that my mind is, has somehow become a hive mind with the client and that I'm seeing, sometimes I see it before they do. And it's very hard for me not to say, oh, we're a whale or, oh, we're, you know, so I just wait, I try my hardest to wait until they begin to see it. But you know, there's this kind of joining that happens in healing where, um, you know, you don't become the pain or become the, um, the part that needs to be healed, but you begin to see the way out of it in a way that's interesting. Yeah. I wonder if we should get back to what being multidimensional is. I feel as if we went off on so many tangents. <laughs> I think oh, we're all I right. think all of this is. <laughs> I think it all just fits, you know, this is yeah. kind of the way of being multidimensional, all of that. Um, yeah, we've been talking for an hour. Why don't we go back to that part where, you know, we used to talk about, you know, well, there's 2D and there's 3D and there's 4D and then the dimensionality, but you know, there's, there's a lot of kind of misconception about some of those labels <clears> and terms. I kind of like the term density and, you know, third density or fourth density instead mm -hmm. of dimension. Because sometimes dimension then, you know, there's the connotation with math, right? With geometry and, and three actual 3D and like, you know, spatial and things like that. But how do you, how do you think about that? You know, because I'm just not a numbers person uh, at all, except for 1111 or, you know, some of the more fun ones. Um, 
I don't think about it at all. I think about it as, I think, not density, but as light. So I think that, um, you know, the more light you're filled with, the higher up you are, and, and the less full of fear you are. I mean, I think the single worst thing that a human being can do as they move through their life is to be afraid. And if I could wish anything for anybody, it would be to lead a, as fearless a life as possible and to have a, to be in trust. And so I think that if you're, if you don't allow fear to enter into your heart and you can fill it instead with light and with a sense of hope and happiness, yeah, sure. You might be a Pollyanna or somebody who seems, you know, silly, or how can you be happy when, you know, Trump is president or <clears throat> how can you be happy when, you know, whatever. I just think that that's living in the highest dimension is to live in the dimension of love. And I know everybody, I, I saw mm -hmm. something, um, I saw something recently, which was, this is third dimensional living. This is fourth dimensional. This is fifth. This is sixth. This is seventh. And it's so damn complicated. You know, I don't, re I don't really care if something is from the ninth dimension or the fifth dimension or the whatever. Are you kind? And are you full of, is your heart full of love? And do you do your best to live a fearless life and to be kind to people? And as far as I'm concerned, then you're in like a hundred, the hundredth dimension, you know, because I, I just don't care about the numbers. I really don't. I know that it's important to think of it as being beyond where we are, but um, I don't know. I think we all bounce in and out. I mean, I'm very human most of the time and I'm feeling so lucky when I can be a little bit, you know, oh, maybe I'm, you know, in the next dimension or, but I think it's all just an attitude. Um, but we all need to be everything. Sometimes you need ice cream and sometimes you need sunshine, you know? All really good points. And, and we think? move in and out of it. We move in and out of it throughout yeah. the day. I think that's really important because you, you know, there are times when, and so often for me, it happens when I'm walking to and from just my barn and on my land and, and, and going, you know, walking on the, through the prairie and usually when the sun's rising or the sun's setting. And I can't hardly do that these days without just crying. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I'm just so, so happy. And I think about, you know, myself in my twenties or thirties, I may have been happy or whatever back then, but I didn't have this, this aching love for, <laughs> for the simplest things you know it's a it's a gray fall day here but you know the swirling colorful leaves and the other things that are going on i mean everything just pulls and spreads and opens my heart and I, i'm finding joy in that and and even joy in things that oh i have a chicken who gosh poor thing she's pulled all the feathers out of her own breast and she's got like she's all naked right here and it's and I don't know there's even a part of me that can see see the beauty in that do you know what I mean mm -hmm. it's when you can you know but those those moments aren't always there you know then someone can say something that'll trigger you and you're brought right back down into humanness and I think that's you know not a bad thing to talk about maybe even next time you know this idea of if you are living multidimensionally well, yes, but you still will get mad. You still will get sad. There still will be frustrating days. And, and this idea that you have to like not feel those emotions, that's crazy. Uh, that, that, that will, that's not the way to do it, to, to kind of hide these things. You know, it's, it's acknowledge your humanness and move through it and, and going, going beyond. You know, we've been talking for about an hour. We've got a, a couple of questions. Um, do you want to say anything about that? But I, I would like to actually ask one of the questions. That have yeah, yeah, no. I, <clears throat> I, the only thing I would say about that is that at this point, it's, you know, short of it being about my children, in which case I really just am total straight 3D person all the way. You know, if something happens to one of my kids, I'm just like, no, <laughs> you know, but um in general, when I, when I go into fear, it has a particular flavor now that I find I really don't like anymore. And um, I, what interests me really a lot right now is Eckhart Tolle's work with the pain body. 
And so I think the pain body is kind of a really good analogy with the fear, because what I find is that my pain body is activated more than my fear is. And so when my pain body is activated, I want fear. I begin to crave it. I want to read sad things. I want to see sad pictures. I want to, um, and if I can stop myself, then that is what I enjoy more. I prefer feeling happy and feeling um, light and not entering into fear or into activating that, that what he calls the pain body or the trauma body. And so yeah. it becomes a preference. You know, I think um, people who live in a state of constant fear and constant worry um, prefer it after a while because it feeds on itself. And I feel so lucky to have stepped out of it a little bit, to have created just enough space that I can go, I need to let that person learn that lesson, or I, I don't need to participate in this. Or, you know, um, I, I mean, I can get caught up in being upset about things, but I like to catch myself and remind myself that I prefer to stand in the light and not to stand in the dark. So that's what I have to say about that. I love that. Let's go to some questions. I love that, especially, especially the part about feeding upon itself. Yes, yeah, so we have a, um, a colleague with us today, my wonderful roommate from the conference in Sarasota. We stayed oh, on a boat team. And um, actually on that boat, there was this porthole and um, in, in above uh, Maddie, so Madeline Miller is with us, Maddie Miller, and she uh, slept on, we slept on the boat. There was, you know, beds on the boat and she had above her bed, this kind of hatch porthole and it was just crystallized in, in sort of, it seemed like broken glass. The glass was not broken, but it, you know, there was this crackling pattern through this, through this glass. Mm -hmm. And so many things have been happening with shattered glass. And Maddie wants to know, because there are more and more things happening with this shattered glass idea. She wants to know if you've experienced anything with shattered glass, either with your clients or in your own sessions these days. Anything with shattered I have not glass? Had, give you about? Not that I can think of. I haven't. Um, I have a terror of broken glass. <laughs> I'm really scared of broken glass. But other than that, I feel as if it breaks into so many pieces that you can never find them all and they're going to get on my foot. I think I've, I think broken glass is a, is a terrifying thing. Um, no, but I have not had any in my sessions that I can think of. If any of my clients are watching, they can remind me if we had some broken glass, but no. I know you had a period where you had a lot of broken glass going on around you. Have you had any more recently? Yeah. Actually, um, well, I'll mention what did happen. One, one of our uh, listeners, Vanessa Watson, says that she's been having dreams about shattered glass and windshields. And I was driving with my son in his truck just a couple days ago, and there's a big crack there. We were talking about glass. It's, it's showing up more and more. Uh, what started it sort of for me was this, this story where I was um, – just sitting at home, it was a weekend, my husband was home, we were both just working on our computers and I got thirsty and I, and I got up to go get a glass of water. And these are the drinking glasses in my household. They're just very plain, but they're drinking glasses. And I got up, I drank all my water, getting thirsty from the show. Anyway, I got up to get a glass of water and I took two steps and I stepped on, and you know, you just said it, it on a piece of glass and there's nothing that quite feels like what a shard of glass feels like when it goes into your foot. And I was so surprised and I was like, wow, that felt like glass. And I sat down and I pulled out a piece of glass and it had, it, it you know, this, this round part of this rim, it looked like it came from one of these. And I asked my husband, did you break something? He says, no. And I mean, nobody's been here. Last time anyone was here was like the summertime and, and it had been weeks since anyone else was here. And we don't have carpets, we have hardwood. They're just, it just didn't, and we have, you know, very sparse around there. And I just, the whole thing was kind of crazy. And then I said, oh, well, I'm not worried about that. And then about an hour later, um, uh, after this all happened, back to work I was, and I had this rambunctious kitten who ran behind my uh, head on the chair I was sitting on. 
just with her chest. I watched the whole thing. She was with her chest. She went boom with this glass that was still sitting here next to me on the side table. It, it hit the floor and it shattered into a million pieces. And I mm. heard my higher self say, that's where the glass came from. And of course, <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Because Candace, you have frozen that, on me. Oh, there you well, are. I've got just, I've got just fine internet. I don't know. You may be sending out some strange. No, now I'm okay. Sing- now I'm okay. You were gone for just a second. But I think it's clear that, yeah. you know, glass, gla- can you hear me okay? I, you, I can hear you just fine. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking of, um, you know, J.D. Salinger has a, car- a series of stories about the glass family. Um, and one of the characters, the one who goes mad is named Seymour Glass. And so when I think of glass, I always think of Seymour Glass because it's about invisibility, because you can't see more glass, right? It's clear already. Wow. So I always think of Seymour Glass and the idea of, um, of nothingness, you know, that the glass is kind of this, this uh, invitation to nothingness in a way. Um, or I think of John Keats, the poet, his, um, his epitaph on his, um, is it epitaph on his, on his uh, tombstone says, um, his name was writ in water, which is another thing I think of with glass, you know, just this idea of invisibility that we're not really writing anything. It's all just an illusion. Um, I was reading um, Carl Jung's um, autobiography that he wrote when he was about, I'm rereading it right now, and I haven't read it since I was about 15. And he says that as he's in his 80s now, the only thing that's real to him are his memories, that the world is just seems like a dream. All of his life is just a long dream of nothingness. It just was an illusion. And that the only thing that's real to him is the is the growth that he's had inside, which I think is really interesting um, because we're kind of talking about yes. the illusion that, that we have a, a life here, that there's, a, there's glass in a way, and there's just nothing. Um, it's just all such a dream. I always say, if this is real, then where did yesterday go, right? <laughs> like, uh, where is it? Why can't I go back there if it was real? Yeah, you know what I mean? I love it. It's all just a dream. I- I I like what you said about its nothingness. And even Maddie said, you know, with with the the idea and so many different synchronicities with glass, but as I was leaving the Sarasota airport, I was in the, just the restroom getting ready to go to my gate. And this woman was unpacking a bag and and she had a picture frame in there and the glass exploded. And I stepped out of the stall and I looked at her and I said, oh, did you break something? And I, I kind of felt out her energy field. And I said, no, I've got to talk to her about this. Ended up holding that woman, hugging her in this bathroom. Her father had just died. She was a, she was a quantum healer as well and was so grateful for that connection. And what Maddie had said was, and oh gosh, I'm just goosebumps all over the place. She says she's read that only in the brokenness can the light enter and Mm -hmm. this idea of the glass, but she also, Maddie said, this idea of the glass ceiling. So, you know, we, we use this phrase about women in the workplace or whatever, but that glass ceiling is, is sort of on top of all of us as far as consciousness goes. Mm -hmm. And we really don't need it. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not really there. Like it, like what you were saying. Yeah. It's an illusion. Yeah. Well, now I'll start looking for broken glass because maybe mine's happening in the future and maybe not the past. I'll pick up the thread of that. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, you know, um, here's, here's another question that, that has or kind of a, a statement. It, actually, so Rosemary Ferdinand asks um, if she thinks what, what we think about this synchronicity she did the cat thing just this morning, literally this morning, 30 minutes before the call, she hears footsteps, thinks it's a person and it's a cat. That oh, just crazy. happened to her. That's great. Right before tuning into this show. There you go with another one of those quizzes. Yeah. I like that. That's it just awesome. shows you how magic and how sticky a lot of um, experiences are and which is why when you surround yourself with high vibrating people, it's magic 
and bringing, yes. you know, having these magical things happen when you hang around magical people. It's interesting. I had a session a few months ago where um, the higher self said, we have, it was some, we said, we have a gift for all of you who are living conscious lives, who are living in awareness as much as possible, that, you know, you used to have the law of attraction, which was you would think about something in a positive way so it would happen. And they said, what we're going to be giving you is that things are going to begin appearing in your life before you knew you wanted them. <laughs> and that that's the highest form of living that's coming is when you didn't even realize you wanted to, to do this or do that or have this or have that or read this or read that or experience this or experience that. And it's going to happen before you even consciously want it or need it or think you do, which I think is wonderful. Talk about living in a flow. Yeah, that's amazing. I love it. I love this work so much. Well, we've got a couple more questions. I tell you what, we've been at this for more than an hour. How about we answer these questions? But before even I say that, you want to do this again? This has been so much fun. I think we could just, I mean, we could just go on all day, you know, you and Always. I talking about this. And I think, yep. <laughs> I think, I'll, I'll do uh, this I think anytime. we time. It's fun. It's almost just like having a camera while we have a chat. <laughs> That's all it is. Yeah. That's all it is. It really is. Because we're constantly doing sessions. We're constantly having experiences and there's always something new to talk about. So yeah, we could really, a, yeah, we could really just do um, uh, session stories, you know? Oh, sure. uh, absolutely. Well, the whole thing is multidimensional living. I kind of like our title. I think it, it, we can always come back to that almost no matter what's going on. We can come back to that, uh, that concept. Yeah. It, yeah. It, We'll just name our show Multidimensional Park. Living. <laughs> you heard it now, folks. We've got it created. It's a series. We'll, we'll be doing this again. Um, okay, so we're going to catch these uh, couple of questions, and yeah. then, then we'll talk about doing this again. So um, Nicola actually asked something. It's just a housekeeping um, question. Uh, talking about the channeling from Pamela, if it's going to be public or private. Channeling, uh, pa Pamela has a a patron account and mary i signed up for it yesterday you did um so i'm officially there i well yes i have and i'm gonna be there this this afternoon so she uh pamela will exclusively do this channeling for people who are on her uh patron account and it's not it's not expensive she has several levels and then you get exclusive features and she does reserve the right to publish these uh publicly if she wants so this, this idea, this uh, topic for today is huge for, for quite everybody, quite frankly. I mean, it's, 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 it's a very big, very interesting topic. She's going to channel the Archangel Lucifer. And she actually even said she's going to trans channel. And she says Lucifer is not who and what you think he is. Has nothing to do with devil, nothing to do with Satan, nothing to do with any of that. I want to hear what she has to say, so I'm going to listen to it. It may or may not eventually be public. Nicola, I would just suggest you go join and uh, become her patron. And, uh, I, you know, join I, jo I joined. I joined also. But the lowest level, I think, is thirteen thirty-three yeah. a month. Yeah. And you know what? To get Pamela <laughs> for thirteen thirty-three Pamela, a month, yeah. she's so wonderful. And um, bargain. You know, yeah, it's big a bargain. bargain. Yeah. And, it's and nice I love to support her. Supporting somebody. Yes, absolutely. And supporting somebody like that is you just receive it back in kind. Oh and, my you God. Know, we as practitioners, we, we love this stuff and, 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 and thinking and separating ourselves out from others and then never experiencing this stuff. It doesn't work like that. We're constantly uh, expanding ourselves by connecting even in this way. So, yeah, um, totally. Past sessions. Past sessions. Ah, Madeline's asking if what time is it's this afternoon, Maddie. It's I, I think, think it's at 4 or 5, Mountain. yeah. Uh, 4 p.m. Mountain, which is 5 p.m. Central, which would be 6 p.m. Eastern. So, uh, yeah, we've answered Maddie's. And we've only got one more question, and I'm going to let you take this one. So we have an anonymous attendee asking this one, but it's a pretty common question. This person asks that um, they would like to book a session with a practitioner, QHHT or quantum healing practitioner but they are afraid their resistance is so strong they won't even be able to get into trance and allow the session to happen. Do you have any suggestions to break that resistance 
and relax into it beyond the meditation and typical procedures. Thank you. How do you want to answer that question? I, I, I think it's kind of like the person who says it, it really hurts my finger when I keep banging it with a hammer. It's like, stop banging your finger with a hammer. Um, just stop thinking that. Stop thinking that, you know? Um, yeah. I, I, you know, people say all the time, oh, I don't think I can be hypnotized. And, you know, I, I say you're hypnotized already most of the time. And, um, you know, yeah. I... I used to worry so much when I was a young practitioner about um, whether people would go under, whether people's sessions would be interesting, whether they'd be happy, whether, you know, and now I have such a hundred percent faith in the, in QHHT and in that work that I know that the person is going to receive exactly the experience that they need to have. And so I actually don't think I've ever had a client who wasn't hypnotized. They may have been conscious through it some of the time, but I think because we practice so much multidimensionality all the time and multitasking all the time that we're used to being in three or four dimensions at once. And so in the old days when Dolores would hypnotize people and she'd say, oh, they go to the synambulistic level, that's because people were already virtually asleep all the time and hypnotized exactly. all the time in a dream world. But people are so awake and conscious now and their minds are constantly moving from place to place. And so um, I just don't worry about it really at all to tell you the truth. So what I would say to that person is much, much more important than um, worrying about your own resistance is to find the practitioner that you feel in alignment with. Um, I have an article that I wrote it's not an article, whatever you call it, a blog post about how to find um, the right practitioner for you that's on my website, which is um, www.healingacrosstime.com. And if you just scroll down, it's called how to find the right practitioner. And, you know, I make this joke, which is some people leave town so they don't have to see me and they go to, you know, California or they go to Kansas to see Candace. And some people leave you know canada to come here to see me because they don't want to see that practitioner so you just have to find the practitioner that you feel in alignment with because that's when your resistance will be lowered and that's when you'll give yourself permission to have this experience and know that you deserve it that's really great too there's also a lot of misconceptions about all of this and there's, there's plenty of articles to read on our our directory practitioner blog which is quantumhealingpractitioners.com that's quantumhealingpractitioners.com. We have a blog on there, five new articles every week written by all kinds of people, including mm -hmm. yours truly, and Mary, and other practitioners. Hypnosis myths. I mean, this whole idea that, you know, my, one of my favorite things to always say is uh, hypnosis is not anesthesia. I mean, literally, if you can just close your eyes and begin to just make up a story and have a daydream, you're already doing it. And mm -hmm. so it's, a, it's there's misperceptions. It's a misconcept of this idea. Dolores, bless her heart, didn't give us a lot of um, assistance when she used to say, I take my clients to the somnambulistic level. <laughs> Agreed. It happened so much and so much more back then because those people couldn't, um, I mean, think about it. We're, we're talking even way earlier in this show, we talked may not have been ready to accept even this idea of life on other planets, right? It, yeah. it could have, it could have caused some sort of, you know, psychotic rift in their day-to-day -day interactions in their world. They weren't ready for it. They weren't ready for it. And yeah. even now, I mean, the, that great session I had with Pedro just the, a week or so ago, I, you know, it was, it was a very light, I, I certainly wasn't somnambulistic. I was like partitioned. And that's an interesting way to think about it too. My, you know, my conscious mind was, ha was absolutely watching the whole thing. And then there was a part of me that was doing this really interesting other thing. But this part didn't have to, you know, exit the building. <laughs> it right. was just paying attention. Right. So, um, yeah. And the thing that I would, the thing I would also say is that my clients who have gone completely out, 
it's almost uncomfortable when they when I bring them out again because they didn't participate. They don't feel as if they participated and they really were just literally out for two hours or for an hour and a half or whatever. And it's a little bit weird. And, you know, one of the things that's amazing about not going all the way out is that you begin to see yourself as a multidimensional person after you've done a QHHT session. So you say, oh my God, I have this magical ability to travel to other dimensions and to travel to the past or what we call the past or to the future or to another planet. I have that ability. And so, you know, I say to people, you only need to come here once because you can do this for yourself afterwards. You know, when you're taking a nap, when you light a candle and lie down and just start finding a vehicle for travel and um, go do it and just trust it. Um, so, yep. you know, I, I, I don't really like the somnambulistic um, client. I do, of course. I love all my clients. But what I mean is it's, sure. you know, they have to listen to their session to, to hear about yep. it. And it's, you know, no, everybody thinks that they're, rem a lot of people think they're remembering the session, but it's like a dream. You think you're remembering it, but then as soon as you get up and leave the, the house and get in your car, you're forgetting. You begin to forget. And so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, it's kind of like this. It is, if you've ever had to have anesthesia, you know, you wonder when you wake up from your procedure, did they, did they slice me open in the right place? I mean, you have no idea what's going on. It's a very uncomfortable feeling. Or it's like if you've ever had you know, way too much to drink and you've, you've blacked out. People feel chagrin. They don't know. They feel very uncomfortable. I think it's, you know, you're right. I, I don't know that I would like it. It's, it's great to bring your, your conscious mind along. And then there's less explaining that has to be done. It has to be a conscious mind that'll allow it to happen though. Mary, this has been so much fun. I can't wait to do it again. I want to thank everybody who's joined us live today. Yes, we thank you so much for coming. We are going to be putting Thank this you, on Candace. YouTube, but we have quite a number of people who joined us on Zoom, participated in the chat room, a whole lot of other people on Facebook, and thank all of you for, for joining us. We're going to do this again. I would like to take just a moment now to once again thank Greg Prescott for sponsoring thank you, Greg. <laughs> the Quantum Healing with Candace show. We do these Facebook live versions sometimes, and we've done it today. I also want to invite you any of you out there who have a service to others practice, and that doesn't have to mean you have an office or only do this, but if you know Reiki or cranial sacral, or if you do any of these things where you find it would be interesting to share practitioner stories, events, insights, and community with other like-minded individuals, please come and join us. All you have to do is go to quantumhealingpractitioners.com, click the green button that says, get listed today. That's all there is to it. It's easy and it's very inexpensive for all that we provide for you. And you get to hang out with people like me and Mary. And Mary, I love hanging out with you. Let's do it again, okay? Next time. Absolutely. Maybe. Anytime. Okay. This is so great. All right. Well, that's it for today. Thanks all again. Thanks everyone. Until next time. Bye. Bye.